Whiskey has now become a mainstream alternative investment. And there are two main forms of investing in whiskey, and that is bottles or casks. Now, the one that is right for you will depend on your circumstances. So in this video, we're gonna take a deep dive and look through all of the permutations of bottles and casks, and hopefully make you, at the end of this video, have a better idea of where you're better putting your money. Now, it's interesting to state that we're filming this at the end of 2023. Interest rates are back to normal, about 5% in the UK at the moment. So alternative investments have become less appealing than mainstream investments. The bond market is in a, in a dire mess. Inflation is very high. Consumer confidence in the market is very low and lots of people are exiting their investments as well. And this, so at the moment we're, we're filming this video when the market, the alternative investment market and the standard investment market is sort of very suppressed. So hopefully this won't have an impact on the reasons why you're buying. But the first thing that you've got to make sure of when you're buying into either bottles and casks is you understand the risks. Now, basically, whiskey investment is completely unregulated. There's no industry support whatsoever. There's no free ombudsman that you can use for advice of support. You can con consult with solicitors and things, but they'll probably be quite clueless in terms of the internal processes of the industry and are quite you're not necessarily able to help. Your money is not protected under the financial services compensation scheme. So your money is massively, massively at risk here. And there are very, very gray ownership structures in terms of casks specifically that are sold without a delivery order. Now, of course, there have been incredible returns from both bottles and casks historically. I would know because my business, Mark Little Limited, if you Google us, you'll see hundreds of five-star reviews from people who we've helped exit their cask and bottle investments. So I have got a lot of experiencing experience in sort of seeing what mistakes people have made and also seeing what things people have done right that have led to the greatest amount of profit for them. So now we're going to take a little drill down into bottles. So when you look at bottles as an investment, they are really like equities. There is a lot of data behind them and they are also very tradable. Every month, tens of thousands of bottles are sold at auction and they are very easy to liquidate. But there are lots of other pros or reasons why you might want to start collecting bottles of whiskey as an investment. Now, the first and foremost thing here is it's a tangible asset. You buy it, it's posted to you and you have it in your hands to check. So you buy a bottle of whiskey and it comes to you and it's tangible, it's in your you're in your hands, you can keep it in your house, you can keep it safe anywhere. It's not like a, a cask, for instance, which is stored in a third party warehouse that you'll never be able to sort of see or touch potentially. And of course, if you've got that bottle in your premises, there's no complicated legal ownership about it. You own it, you've purchased it. Likewise, when you're buying these things through websites, there are levels of protection there. If you buy the bottle and change your mind, you have of course got the distance selling regulations in the UK, which mean within 14 days, you can send it back for a refund, no questions asked. And that does extend to auctions as well, if you have not seen the bottles in person. Now, another very good thing about bottles is that they can be data driven. Because there are tens of thousands of auctions of bottles sold every month at auction, there are tens of thousands of price points generated each month for you to see and for you to monitor your investment and also use that data to make investment decisions. And again, this is what we help some high net worth customers with. Now, it's a good mid to long, into, like all whiskey investment should be seen as like a mid to long term investment, five to 10 years as a minimum. However, with bottles, there is the possibility of an immediate cash out. You could buy a bottle today, keep it for two months. There could be a big jump in the market and you could sell it. And there's a lot of liquidity there, essentially because there's so many auctions and so many different people buying and selling and the prices are completely transparent as well. Another benefit for bottles is that there are a lot of different entry points. You don't need a lot of money to invest in a bottle of whiskey. About the lowest price bottle that I would recommend investing in is the Macallan 18 year old Cherry Oak, which can be bought for about £350 and it's released each year. So you can buy one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten as the years go by and to sort of like to track a period of time. The top end of the market, broadly speaking, 
it, yes, it does go up to the millions and the hundreds of thousands, but broadly speaking, the, a high portion of the whiskey bottle market is between, should we say, 200 and 2,000 pounds. There is a smaller market in the three to 5,000 pound bottle range, an even smaller market in the five to 10,000 pounds, and a tiny sliver that's sort of 10,000 pounds and above. So to buy incredible bottles of whiskey doesn't need an incredible amount of capital. There are also multiple ways to buy in terms of you can buy from retailers, you can buy from auctions. Of course, you've got to make sure that whatever you're buying is genuine, so you always bear that in mind. But it's there's, there's, there's also sort of like a tax and import charges to consider here as well. It's like if you're buying in the UK, I'd say the UK is obviously the hub of whiskey investment and whiskey collecting or Scotch whiskey collecting and investment in the world. And of course you can buy these bottles and send them to storage locations as well if you want to avoid taxes. So if you want to avoid paying 20% import duty or VAT when it comes into your country, wherever you are, or in, in the case of Hong Kong, 100% import duty, you can buy those bottles in the UK and you can leave them in stores like LCB or Octavian or bonded stores. But of course, all of these bottles are normally duty paid, but they can be stored there. And there are other specialist storage providers. Now, with all of that said, there are a lot of pros to whiskey, a lot of pros, but there are also some cons. And again, the cons come down to the like the storage potentially. Everyone's done, <laughs> everybody. A lot of people start off collecting whiskey and thinking, yes, I'm just gonna buy a few bottles and I'll put them on this shelf over here and they'll be absolutely fine. Two years later, they've got 250 bottles, their spare room in the house has taken over and their wife or partner is giving them grief. That happens a lot, people. It starts as a hobby and it turns into a passion. So, and you do need to store this whiskey relatively carefully. You need to make sure there's not too much temperature fluctuation and you need to make sure there's no UV light coming on them to damage the liquid and the labels. You might also need to take out insurance as well on these policy, on, the, on these collections. Uh, Bruce Stevenson, who we did a video with a couple of years ago, they've changed their name recently. I can't think of their name, but I'll put it on screen somewhere now. Uh, they, they offer a policy at 100,000 pounds worth of cover for about 350 pounds. So yes, the insurance is a con, as in a negative, not a, uh, a con. Uh, so the insurance is a negative, but a small amount of insurance, a large amount of insurance, as in 100,000 pounds worth of cover, can be had relatively cheaply. Now, one of the other negatives about buying bottles of whiskey is buying the wrong bottles. You know, you've got growth and value investors. We've done a whole video on this, so go back and watch that if you want to understand more about investment strategies. Unfortunately, a lot of people come into this market and follow the numbers. When the market's going up like that, they follow those numbers and they go and buy whatever is making the greatest yield. And if you compare that to equities, look at the Shy Hellion fund that grew massively high and then it failed massive, well not failed massively, it's massively down. So with buying things based on their growth, you also have a problem there because you might not necessarily be buying the right things for the right reasons. We always focus on value investing, but that's quite difficult as an outsider or a lay person without a lot of time and study and a lot of experience of the market. And another negative really with bottles is it doesn't really look like you're actually buying that much. You know, we sold these Coronation bottles, the Macallan 27 euro Coronation bottles for two and a half thousand pounds. Two and a half thousand pounds for 70 milliliters of liquid, or 700 milliliters of liquid is expensive. You get one bottle to put on your shelf, two and a half grand. It doesn't look like you've spent a lot of money. Two and a half grand in some of the new distilleries might even buy you a barrel in some instances. For four or five grand, you can definitely go out and buy a cask of whiskey which is like, oh, I've got a cask, it's massive. There's loads more bottles in there. But again, there are pros and cons and the amount that you get or the perceived value for money is definitely less with bottles. And another thing is that, you know, obviously is that prices can go up and down and depending on where you are in the cycle, it would depend on whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. It's like selling your house. If you're selling your house in the midst of a recession, that's a bad thing because the market's gone down, but you, will you complain when the market's gone up and the prices are very high when you're coming to sell it? So there are lots of pros and cons for bottles. So now we move on to casks and casks are the, probably the thing that you've seen flaunted around your Facebook page by dozens of, let's call them dodgy companies, because most of them, there's definitely a lot of dodgy companies out there. Historically, there's always been a lot of dodginess in cask investment and the serious fraud office have often shut down schemes. More recently, the FBI just shut down a 16 million pound cask investment scheme that was dodgy. But anyway, casks, they do have their pros. 
they could you could technically call them a tangible asset in terms of you're buying a physical good. You're buying a, a vessel, a cask full of a product, whiskey, that is stored in a warehouse. Now, <sighs> it offers, casks offer much more of an experiential investment in terms of if you've stored that warehouse, uh, that cask correctly, it's a warehouse with a delivery order, there's there's almost certainly the likelihood that you'll be able to go up at some point and look at the cask, and get some bottles out of it and see how that whiskey is maturing as the years go by. It's a fantastic thing to do. I've got a cask for my son and as he's getting older, obviously the whiskey's getting older and my role as a father is to quality control that whiskey. So every year we have to get a sample drawn for him and to see how it's going. And at Christmas, it makes a lovely little dram. The whiskey is also, broadly speaking, stored in bonded warehouses. Now, there's, be careful with the terms around bonded warehouses because bonded warehouses themselves are not regulated, as in there's not an ombudsman or anything like that, but there are regulations that the warehouse keepers have to follow in order to keep those goods in bond. It's a bit like saying, so one of the problems you'll find with cask investment companies is they'll say, oh, it's in a regulated warehouse and we've got a wow go this out on the other. It's a little bit like your taxi driver pulling up and showing you, yes, I've got a government appointed uh, license, blah, 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 blah. You, you know, it's just a driving license. A wowger is just a certificate that's the same as the driving license, just a requisite for doing your job. Anyway, the stored in bonded warehouses, which are designed for storing these vessels or casks of whiskey, and broadly speaking, they're incredibly safe because of the amount of tax it is owing to the government. So for instance, the risk of fire is mitigated greatly. Each one of these casks contains anywhere between sort of, let's say between one and 250 liters of uh, whiskey, which is at most cases at a cast strength of say 62, 63 and a half degrees, uh, uh, ABV even, which means that they're an incredible fire hazard. And if there was a fire, there would be a catastrophic loss of product, a catastrophic threat to life, and also a catastrophic loss of duty. So of course, most of these bonded warehouses or all of these bonded warehouses will have incredible security systems in place to make sure that nobody's stealing that liquid and also fire precautions in place in terms of sprinkler systems, emergency call out alarms and everything else like that. Likewise, each cask of whiskey weighs like a hogshead when it's full, weighs over a quarter of a ton. That is a heck of a risk to move around. So the storage racks that these casks go on are normally incredibly over-engineered, not for the sake of protecting your whiskey, but for the sake of protecting the workers that are working in that environment. So storing a cask in a bonded warehouse, assuming that you have a delivery order and the cask is held in your name, the bonded warehouses are a very damn good place to store those bottles. Now, one of the other benefits of cask whiskey investment, or if you're, if you're buying it as an investment, is that it's free from capital gains. So basically, because whiskey is evaporating all the time, as the years go by, the ABV will continue to drop. And if that whiskey drops below 40% ABV, it's no longer classed as Scotch whiskey, and therefore, it has been argued that casks of whiskey are a wasting asset and therefore your profits are free from capital gains. That is a benefit, but it's not necessarily that easy to make that gain. It's, it's more nuanced, but, but anyway, but theoretically, yes, casks are free from capital gains tax, which is a very big positive thing. And there's also the potential for two factors of growth. You've got age-driven growth in terms of the value. So if you buy a cask as a five-year-old, and then sell it as an 18 year old, obviously 18 year old whiskey is worth significantly more than any five year old whiskey. And likewise, any 30 year old whiskey is worth significantly more than an 18 year old whiskey. But another factor that you've got to look for is the, the, the brand driven growth. You know, in the 1990s, Macallan was a small distillery that was still letting their casks go to brokers to sell onto the public. Springbank had their own cask investment program in the 1990s. Yet now some of those Macallan casks are worth upwards of a million pounds, and some of those Springbank casks are worth upwards of 100,000, 200,000 pounds. The reason for that growth isn't necessarily the improvement of the quality of their product, it's to do with the improvement of the perception of their brand. Now, there are cons that come with whiskey cask investment. The biggest one is a con in the real sense in terms of you may not actually own the cask that you have purchased. If you've bought the cask and you've only got a certificate, you've essentially got a piece of paper from somebody's printer who sold you the whiskey. You need to find out if that cask exists and whose name it is held in. And the way to do this is either contacting the warehouse directly where the cask is held or getting a delivery order from the seller and transferring the cask into your ownership. 
One of the other thing around this as well is there's no pricing transparency. Unlike bottles, and this is a massive positive for bottles, there's huge pricing transparency. If somebody's trying to sell you a bottle for X price, you can research it on the internet and see if that price is fair. You cannot do that with casks. There are, there is a huge amount of fraud that is committed in this way in the industry with the casks, not within the industry, but I'm saying within the sector of cask investment. And this is the reason why bottle or whiskey bottle fraud is so negligible because you can, you know, as we mentioned earlier, the bulk of the whiskey bottle market is between sort of like 200 and 3000 pounds. There's not a lot of profit to make there. But if you can take a cask of whiskey that's worth 20,000 pounds and sell it for 100,000 pounds to somebody unknowingly, like thinking that that's a fair price, then that's obviously where the scammers and the fraudsters go to. There's loads of dodgy dealers and there's loads of potential for scamming. As I've mentioned, if you're getting your certificates printed off somebody's printer, you could be part of a monumental Ponzi scheme and never know it. And let's not beat about the bush there. If Bernie Madoff can pull off a Ponzi scheme in front of all the regulators in America, then I'm pretty certain a cask investment company running certificates off their printer somewhere in London is able to do that to you. The easy way to mitigate this is to find out the details of the cask. Where is it stored? What are the cask details? Have a Google, call up the warehouse. Oh yes, I bought cask number this, X, Y, and Z from these people. Please can you confirm that it's in your warehouse as they've advised me on my certificate. That is one way around it. Now, there's no way to beat about the bush with this, that casks are a medium to long-term investment, five, 10 years plus as a minimum. You can't buy a cask this year and hope to sell it in two or three years time because nothing fundamental about that whiskey would have changed. Let's say that you bought an eight year old cask and you're now selling it as a 12 year old cask four years later. There still isn't a big price difference between a 12 year old whiskey and an eight year old whiskey. You have to take a whiskey from a young age, as in let's say five years old and take it to a premium age at the minimum of 18 years old, for instance. Exiting casks also takes time and it's not easy to do. It needs, unless you're doing it as part of like a, a pyramid of sales and you're selling it to sort of like a, like a greater fool theory, selling it to another investor and then another investor, then another investor, that is not a sustainable way to exit these investments. The sustainable way to exit these investments is to historically to sell them to somebody wherever they are in the world who will essentially and eventually bottle them and release them to the public because you have to remember at some point all of the whiskey in Scotland has to be bottled. Now one of the other things that go along with this is that people think that you can freely sell your casks in auction. Well no, have you got a delivery order? Absolutely not. Well then you can't sell it at auction because you don't have, you can't sell that cask free from encumbrance. Now another thing here is to think that you may be able to sell this cask in another way. You might be able to contact another business like me, for example, and say, can I sell my cask of whiskey? Well, yes, if you've got a delivery order and no, if you've got a certificate. Yes, if you've got a delivery order because you can sell it free from encumbrance. You can sell it to anybody and the transfer is between the new owner and the warehouse by yourself. Now, if you have a cask that's managed by a third party company, that becomes problematic because a business like mine, for instance, would then have to hand over all the details of the buyer to that third party company. And there are of course commercial implications there that mean that a lot of people don't like handing over the details to a dodgy cask investment company, myself included. There are also limitations about how many casks of whiskey that you can own. The broad consensus in the UK is that if you own five or more casks of whiskey, you'll be potentially considered a revenue trader in the eyes of HMRC, which means that you will need to go on and get more licenses in order for you to hold that number of casks. The workaround, and this is why a lot of companies work through the certificate scheme is or system, is that basically if they sell you casks and just give you certificates, you're technically owning five, 10, 15, 20 certificates and not five, 10, 15, 20 casks of whiskey. So the ownership is sort of mitigated there because you're actually owning the paper and not the casks. But yes, there is that limit to how much capital you can deploy through cask investment if you're registered in the UK. And again, there are limited, like there is limited flexibility in terms of exiting the investment as we've already covered. So the question now becomes, where should you put your money? Should you put it in bottles or should you put it in casks? Well, the first question you need to ask yourself is how long can you afford to have your capital tied up for? If you can only afford to tie your capital up for the short term, neither investment is right for you. If you can afford to tie your investment, your capital up for the medium to long term, then both 
Well, then bottles are a good example for you because bottles can work as a mid and long term investment. However, if you have got if you're looking to tie this money away for a very long term, let's say 10 years plus, then casks and bottles would become viable for you. It also comes down to how much you have available to invest and you've got more flexibility with bottles, but I wouldn't say you should begin talking or even thinking about either investment unless you've got around four to five thousand pounds or above to invest. Yes, you can do it cheaper, but the returns are not necessarily likely to be the same and you'll be buying an inferior product. So yes, if you double your money on a £250 bottle of whiskey, you've earned £250. If you earn 10% on a £2,500 bottle of whiskey, you've also earned £250. But these lower value bottles at the bottom of the market are problematic. Look at Macallan 10 year old from the 1990s, for instance, that has gone up a huge amount in terms of percentage points, but in real terms, you can still buy them for £500. So it's not necessarily going to make you rich. The other thing to consider is about how much market understanding you have. Casks can be a great source or a, a, a great investment. We've seen people, like I've mentioned, but those casks of Springbank and Macallan make hundreds to millions of pounds worth of profit from those investments. But they are the minority. You know, that doesn't happen to everybody. Yes, there can be great uh, uh, investments to be had, but a large part of that was for two reasons. Chance that people were in the right place at the time buying those casks and chance that the market happened to evolve so much over them. But the thing is with both, it, de it depends on how much market knowledge you have and how much time you're prepared to put in and research and also how much time and care you want to put into that investment as a whole. So there you go. There is a big summary of bottles versus casks and what is potentially the best investment for you. What do you think? Have you got bottles or casks as an investment? Let me know down in the comments and see which one you think is the investment king.